Energy drinks are super popular nowadays. They're filled with sugar and caffeine though. But do they cause cancer? Weird things that burn calories that you probably won't believe. Part 10, playing video games. No, really, like just playing video games. Studies show that you actually burn 62 calories an hour just by playing video games. So this would mean that if you played video games for four and a half days straight, you could burn a pound of fat just by playing video games. That's pretty weird. All of you video game enthusiasts are watching this and are probably so excited that you can lose weight by playing video games. Isn't that so exciting? Well, we all have what's called a basal metabolic rate, and that is a certain number of calories that our body basically burns off while we are essentially lying in bed watching TV. So what is the basal metabolic rate? Now, this gentleman said that playing video games, you can burn 64 calories an hour. Is that a lot? Well, that actually is your basal metabolic rate for a lot of people. And so what he's saying here is a bit deceptive. Yes, you can burn 64 calories an hour playing video games, but you can burn that lying in bed watching TV too. Now that is compared to, let's say, playing board games. You can burn upwards of 100 calories an hour playing board games, and you can burn upwards of 325 calories an hour just walking. So unfortunately, playing video games is not a weight loss strategy. This video is cap. Do you ever wonder what foods kill you faster? That's honestly one of my biggest fears. All right, luckily for you, I got Gordon Ramsay's son here to confirm this. All right, come on, Nick. <laughs> so it's been proven by the University of Washington that every hot dog you eat takes off 36 minutes of your life. So that means two hot dogs takes over an hour of your life away. I've eaten so many hot dogs in my life. Well, luckily they also found that eating a PB&J adds 33 minutes to your life. And baked salmon and rice and beans can add 10 to 15 minutes to your life. Now all everyone's gonna eat is PB&J sandwiches and salmon all day. Okay, so if you ask any of the nurses at the hospital or the surgical centers where I work what I have for lunch every day, <laughs> one of the things that I often have is PB&J. But do PB&J sandwiches actually extend your life and does eating hot dogs reduce the length of your life? Well, these claims that they're making are based off of a study from the University of Michigan, not the University of Washington. And they were published in Nature, a reputable journal. They're based off a study called the Global Burden of Disease. And this was a study that linked causes of mortality and morbidity, basically illness and death, to the types of food that are eaten. Never eaten another piece of candy ever again. And they found that there are certain foods that you can eat that can increase your probability of death or an earlier death. And those are foods like red meats, processed meats, breakfast sandwiches, and yes, Sai burgers. Whereas on the opposite side, there are foods that you can eat that are associated with living longer. And those include legumes like beans, fruits and vegetables, non-starchy vegetables specifically, fish, and yes, peanut butter. So this video is fact. Okay, so this guy is massaging his face. And this video was billed as a facelift on the caption. So is he creating a facelift by doing these facial massages? I mean, they look kind of fancy. Look at him, look at that. Stretching that skin. Does this actually do something? Is it a real facelift? Well, the millions of people that watched it think so. Massaging your face like you did in this video can be good at kind of moving fluid through your face. So if you're swollen, that can really help with that. And it can also help to increase circulation temporarily to your face as well. But this is not a facelift. And it's not gonna lift your face. It's not gonna smooth out your wrinkles at all. In fact, doing what he's showing you could actually increase your risk of breakouts. If you do what he's showing you here without washing your hands first, you can then transplant that bacteria that may be sitting on your hands. You know, let's say you just went number two and you forgot to wash your hands. You can put that bacteria on your face. And by putting bacteria on your face, by rubbing it all over your face, like what he's doing here, you can increase your risk of getting an acne breakout. So does facial massage feel nice on your skin? Maybe. Is it going to be a facelift? 
This is cap. But do Stark Circles, puffiness, or bags by using a cold spoon. I want you to just go and grab two spoons, run them or dip them in cold water, and then stick them in the freezer for about five minutes. And then take the spoons out of the freezer after five minutes and simply lay the backside against the lower portion of your eye until the spoons get warm. The reason why cold spoons underneath your eyes are so incredibly effective is that the cold actually constricts the blood vessels. It also helps reduce the puffiness caused by excess fluid. What this guy is recommending is kind of similar to that old thing where you take some cold cucumber slices and you put them on your eyes, but it doesn't work as well. And let me explain why. It's definitely true that cold temperature products, if you put them over your eyelids, can help to constrict blood vessels and it can reduce swelling. And that's why putting cold spoons on your eyes can definitely help. But there are a lot of better ways to reduce swelling that can do even more. And one of the natural tricks that I recommend is my potatoes and green tea concoction. So this is what you do. You steep some green tea and then you put that in the refrigerator so it gets nice and cold. You take a white potato, you slice it into tiny slices, and you put that also in the refrigerator to get it nice and cold. Well, when you want to then reduce the puffiness of your eyelids, you take those potato slices, dip it in the green tea, and put that over your eyes. Now the potatoes are gonna be cold, and so that cold temperature, like those spoons, is going to help reduce swelling. But there's also starch in the potatoes, and starch can act as a very mild skin lightener. And how many of us don't like the dark circles under our eyes? Wow, he gave me the dark circles around his eyes. Now the green tea is filled with antioxidants, which are basically anti-inflammatory, and that also is good for your skin. And it also has caffeine, and caffeine can also work to help constrict those blood vessels and to reduce the puffiness. So although his cold spoons on the eye trick is fact, there are better ways to do it. Oh, so this woman's got a gua sha device and she is trying to get rid of her smile lines. These are called the nasolabial folds and the nasolabial folds are the wrinkles from the nose to the mouth and then they're the marionette lines. There are so many videos on TikTok where people claim that doing a gua sha can give you a snatched neck, it can give you lifted cheekbones and give you essentially a facelift in a little rock. Now I'll tell you that I'm a fan of gua sha. I think it's very nice to massage your face with it. That can help reduce puffiness like I mentioned earlier with that guy that was doing all the facial massage. But like many natural treatments, some people claim that gua sha can do all of these things that it just cannot. These lines, these wrinkles, will not go away with gua sha. They won't go away even with doing a facelift. The only way to really get rid of smile lines, the nasolabial folds and the marionette lines, is to use an injectable filler. So if you've got smile lines and you wanna use a gua sha on them, feel free to do it. It's not gonna make it worse, but it's also not gonna make them go away. This video is cap. Are you like the millions of people who have a bathroom filled with half-empty bottles and tubes of skincare? They may have promised to reduce your wrinkles, lighten your blemishes, and help you feel better about your skin, but none of them actually worked. Well, I've got the answer for you. It's called Yoon Beauty. Yoon Beauty is one of the only skincare lines that combines natural and organic ingredients with the latest and scientifically proven components like vitamin C and retinol. I'm so certain that you'll love Yoon Beauty products that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Head to YoonBeauty.com and use the coupon code 20OFF to get $20 off your first order over $99. I'll put a link in the caption below. Once you try Yoon Beauty products, I bet you'll throw away your other skincare products and start loving your skin again. Thank you for putting your trust in me. Energy drinks are so popular nowadays, but they are filled with sugar and caffeine. Oh, do they cause cancer though? Does consuming too much sugar lead to cancer? That's essentially what this video is claiming. Well, the truth is, is that there is no direct link between consuming sugar and getting cancer. There is, however, an indirect link between sugar and cancer. We know that one of the main reasons why our society has such a problem with obesity is because of excess consumption of sugar. Must eat sugar. So excess consumption of sugar can lead to obesity, which does increase the risk of many types of cancer. 
And there are many holistic experts that do believe that eating too much sugar can actually feed cancers and potentially encourage them to grow more quickly. There isn't any data that I know of though that definitively proves this, so this is at this point a belief but not necessarily fact. So energy drinks, as bad as they are for you, and I do not recommend you drink any of them because they are terrible for your health, but they do not have a direct link to causing cancer, yet. So that video is CAP. So this guy is not a fan of chewing gum. And why is that? Well, there are some issues that can develop if you chew gum excessively. In some people, it can lead to jaw pain and even TMJ problems. In my practice, I also see a lot of people who develop masseteric hypertrophy. And that is overgrowth of the master muscle, which is a chewing muscle on the side of your jaw. Then some people, if you chew a lot of gum or if, let's say, you grind your teeth a lot at night, it can cause that muscle to get bigger and bigger, causing the jaw to look wider and wider. Hey, the jaw wants what it wants. Get jabs on but there are some actual benefits to chewing gum if you do it in moderation. For some people, it can help to stave off sleepiness. Like if you're driving and you're getting those afternoon sleepies, putting a little bit of gum in your mouth and chewing it may help you wake up a little bit. Chewing gum can also stimulate saliva production and having more saliva in your mouth may help to reduce the risk of cavities. Just make sure that that gum is sugar free. So I say this video is fact. You know, there's actually a way to predict how tall you're going to be and methods to get taller. How? Okay, so we know that when you go to the doctor, they can always predict how tall you're going to be when you're older, but you actually don't need a doctor to do that. And there are things that you can do to make you grow taller than the prediction. So it's scientifically proven. Yeah, so it's been proven by health experts that your height relies only 60 to 80% on your genetics and the other 20 to 40% is all up to what you do and how you live your life. So it's been proven by research that you should at least be sleeping eight to 10 hours every night because when you're sleeping, you release a growth hormone that helps you grow. I honestly thought that height had to do with 100% genetics. I know. And the next thing to help you grow is actually weightlifting. Really? Yeah. So many people believe that weightlifting will stop you from growing. But according to health experts, it's a myth because there's no scientific evidence or research behind it. And to predict how tall you're going to be when you're older, it's actually a really easy math equation. All you have to do is take your mom's height and your dad's height in inches and then add those together, divide that number by two. And if you're a boy, you add 2.5 to that number. And if you're a girl, you subtract 2.5 five from that number and that's how tall you're going to be in inches that's all the doctors are doing okay so at the beginning of this video they say that genetics only accounts for about 60 to 80 percent of your height the rest of it is due to environmental factors which this is a fact this is something that we do believe and it's true that there are certain things that you can then do as you're growing up that can impact how tall you are that can be impacted by your nutrition by how much sleep you get because when you sleep your body releases growth hormones so hormones can impact that and there are I'm sure other factors that we don't even understand right now but then they end this video by basically giving a prediction about how tall you're gonna get well that prediction isn't always true because 60 to 80 percent of our height is due to genetics and the other 20 to 40 percent is not now pretty much everything they said then in the beginning of the video is fact but the last one could be considered cap for those people that when they add up these numbers they go geez that doesn't match to my height well that's probably because of that 20 to 40 percent that is due to environmental and lifestyle factors so does applying ice on your face shrink your pimples he says it does in general, one way to reduce the appearance of pimples is to reduce their inflammation and the swelling. Ice is great at reducing swelling. We all know that because if we get hurt, the first thing we do is put ice on it. But there are a lot of other ways that you can reduce a pimple even overnight that work better than applying some ice over the area. There are commercially available pimple patches, and I'll put some links in the caption below for some of them if you wanna check them out, uh, that can help reduce the size and the redness of a pimple overnight. These may have ingredients like salicylic acid or be hydrocolloid patches, which got really popular on TikTok and went viral a year or two ago. So in general, if you've got a big honkin' zit and you wanna reduce it overnight, that would be my first choice. But an even simpler way to reduce the size of the pimple overnight is to take a small Band-Aid and put that over the pimple. <laughs> By covering up the pimple, it can help reduce inflammation and swelling, and you can even see changes, once again, overnight from something that that simple. So this TikTok was fact, but there are better options than ice. 
Did you know if you grab a coconut, grab a hammer and a screwdriver and make some holes in the eyes? Then grab a bowl and drain the coconut water out. Save it, we're gonna need it for later. The next thing you wanna do is gently tap around the coconut with the hammer. You'll start to see a crack is forming. And boom! Then you wanna get this coconut meat out, so grab a knife and stick it around the edges of the coconut. Then use a spoon to pry it out. Grab half of the coconut meat and chop it up in smaller chunks. Put the coconut pieces into a blender cup. Add one cup of hot water and one teaspoon of black pepper. Then blend it. What you have right now is a super powerful mixture that's gonna prevent hair loss and stimulate new hair growth. So the truth is, is that coconut oil, coconut water, coconuts are great for your skin and for your hair. They're anti-inflammatory and they're filled with antioxidants and all this is good for the hair, but it is not proven to thicken your hair or to cause new hair growth. There's so many easier ways than doing what he just did where you take a coconut, you cut it in half, you chop it up, you mix it up. It's a lot of work. Instead, there are a couple of better, much more effective ways to treat thinning hair. At basic, what I recommend would be to get on a good hair loss supplement, and I will link one in the caption below that we sell at my online store. And you wanna combine that with the use of a low light laser therapy helmet like iRestore, that's my favorite one. If you wanna add anything to it and you wanna stay in that natural realm, then you may wanna look into topical rosemary oil on top of that. And once again, I'll put links in the caption below. So. Coconuts, eh, it can help with hair a bit, but there's so much easier and more effective options. So let's just say that this video was cap. So what do I like even more potentially than factor cap videos on TikTok? Well, a lot of you, and myself included, enjoy satisfying TikTok videos. Videos where you take huge splints out of a nose and they breathe so well afterwards. Or maybe when you're taking sheets of skin off of a foot. There's so many satisfying videos on TikTok and I react to a number of them on the video right up here. And I rate them to see just how satisfying they truly are. Take a peek at that video and feel the chills coming down your spine. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and only consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.